Ladies, gentlemen, distinguished guests, I should even say lords, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. It is an honor for me to be here tonight to present the sixth Asian Awards. I am indeed Alistair McGowan. One more time, hello! That's more like it. You may be wondering, shh, 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 shh. you may be wondering why I have been chosen to be here tonight with a name like mine. Alistair McGowan, you're probably thinking, he sounds like he's Scottish through and through. I thought the same thing, Les Gemma, until I did the BBC's Who Do You Think You Are program. Some of you may have seen it. Some of you clearly did see it. You're laughing already. I found out on that program that my ancestors, far from being Scottish, are actually on my father's side from Southern Ireland and India, Les Gemma. That's got your attention. Southern Ireland. Southern Ireland and India. So as soon as I found that out, obviously, I rang Sanjeev Bhaskar and said, Indian. <laughs> no, as soon as I found that out, I said to the producers, okay, Southern Ireland and India. I said, what does that make me? They said, well, a cork Asian. So you learn things <laughs> during these programs. Possibly the best joke you'll hear tonight. Make the most of it. Thank you. No, I am actually not obviously Cork Asian, uh, not even British Asian, but I am apparently Anglo-Indian. Anglo-Indian. My father was born in Calcutta. His father was born in Calcutta. His father's father was born in Allahabad. So generations of my family were in India, and yet the sixth year of the Asian Awards, still no honorary Asian award for me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next year, I hope I will get one. That's all I can say. Not even a role in Indian summer. Not even a walk-on part in Citizen Khan, Adil Ray. Thank you very much. I know you're in the room. So anyway, I am your host for this evening. I'll be taking you through the awards very shortly after I've hopefully entertained you for the next 10 minutes. I'm fulfilling the role, if you were here last year, that Gok Wan played last year. Yes, Gok Wan. Anybody here last year who saw Gok Wan? Lots of you. I always worry, I've never met Gok. I always worry, I'm sure a lot of you do too. If you meet him, I'll call him Cock by mistake. I always worry. <laughs> How about that? Anyway, that's as rude as it gets. Do not worry if you're here with aged relatives. I'm sure some of you are. That's as rude as it gets. Now, of course, we have a lot of very successful people in the room tonight. It's a great pleasure to be here in front of you. We have people from the fields of music. We have fashion designers. We have sportsmen in the room. We have leading Asian actors in the room, Asian presenters in the room. We have people from Made in Chelsea who I don't know quite what to describe what they do because I don't understand what they do in the room. We have... What is it? We have biz I don't understand it. We have business leaders in the room, and of course we have some entrepreneurs in the room. Give yourselves a huge round of applause before we carry on. Obviously, the entrepreneurs, business leaders, inventing things, selling us things, making money, helping the economy. New products appear all the time. One product we are all very familiar with now very familiar with, is the sat-nav, of course. Over 10 years, we've got used to the word sat-nav, the idea of the sat-nav, how sat-navs work, part of the culture, part of the language, part of traveling. I remember, though, the first time I got into a car and somebody used that word to me, I used to love reading maps. I got into the car and my friend said to me, don't worry, you don't need to read the map today, Al. I've got sat-nav in the car. I'd never heard this word. I thought there was an Indian bloke in the back giving directions. <laughs> I half expected to hear, what the bloody hell do you think you're doing? I said, go straight on at the roundabout, not second left, you bloody bastard. <laughs> Listen to your uncle Satnev. I don't know. Paul Dagu told me that I was going to kill that joke. He said, that joke's going to go really well. He was wrong. <laughs> but we have sportsmen in the room. Do we have sports fans in the room? <laughs> Excellent. It's going to be a big summer of sport this year, of course. We've got the Olympics to look forward to in Rio. We also have Euro 2016. Some of the footballers are in this room. Is it me? When we hear our national manager, Roy Hodgson, interviewed, he always sounds to me less like a football manager, more like, like he's auditioning for the role of Fagin in the musical Oliver. You know what I mean? Well, obviously, you know, we've got some very, very talented young players in the squad at the moment. We've had some very, very good results recently. We've got some very exciting players up front, the likes of young Harry Kane and Jamie Vardy, of course. But we do have one or two problems in the heart of our defence, all of which means that I am reviewing the situation. Can John Terry be a villain all his life? <laughs> all the trials! All the trials and tribulations. I will swap Ulrika Johnson and my wife. 
but as expectations grow for me, the press will ever go at me. They'll go at me and nag at me. The fingers, they will wag at me. All decency they'll take from me. A misery they'll make for me. I think I'd better think it out again. Oi! Oh, yes. Roy Hodgson has faked. Alongside Roy Hodgson, after his brief holiday in Spain, as we call it, Gary Neville, of course. Gary Neville, I'm sure you know, you've all seen Gary Neville on Sky Sports doing his punditry, and I'm sure you've all probably tried to do your Gary Neville impressions as well. But I'm sure you know that you've got to be very careful when you're doing your Gary Neville impressions, because if you start to talk too slowly as Gary, you just turn into Dave from the royal family, don't you, bad? <laughs> You've got to be careful. One of my favourite football presenters is in the room. Manish Basin, I think, is here somewhere. Manish, of course, was the host for many years of the Football League show after match of the day on a Saturday night. Alongside Manish, frequently, was Steve Claridge, a player some of you may not know. Steve Claridge played for every club in the country, basically. And he was once asked about his career in the media. He said, yeah, you know, I've done very well. You know, I've been uh, employed on a lot of programmes. Yeah, I work on Five Live, Football Focus, match of the day. But I think it's on the Football League show that I finally found Manish. So, you know, <laughs> second best gag of the night, possibly, that one, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, you have to understand Steve Claridge, and you've got to know Manish, but uh, I can see Manish enjoyed it. Uh, we are hoping to do well, of course, at Euro 2016. We hope our strike force is going to be read by, led by Harry Kane. And I have to be honest, you know, I've been trying very hard to do an impression of Harry Kane over the last few weeks, but I've listened to Harry quite a lot, and I have to say, I just don't think there's anything really about his voice that makes him very impersonatable. I just can't seem to find anything that makes Harry Kane stand out from the crowd, to be perfectly honest with you. Irony, lost on you. Um, but, thank you, sir. But what a season Leicester City have had in the football, of course. And an amazing season they've had. Jamie Vardy, I believe, is here somewhere tonight. And uh, he's thrilled us. He's thrilled us all season. He's had me jumping off my seat, punching the air with joy. And I'm a Coventry fan, for God's sake. But I love what Jamie Vardy has been achieving all season. But recently, he won't mind me saying this, I'm sure other people have said it. Jamie Vardy grew a little beard when he played for England, scored two goals, grew a little beard, and suddenly, I'm not the first person to say it, he looked like old Steptoe, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? I half expected to see him on the football being interviewed afterwards saying, oh Roy, please pick me for your England squad, go on. I know you prefer Wayne really, but I've scored some terribly good goals, I really have all season, I've been scoring more goals than Wayne, go on, pick me, you miserable little bleeder. <laughs> Almost enough about football. I talk too much about football. My wife does not like football. She always says to me, you talk too much about football. But she surprised me. The whole Leicester thing has infused my wife. I came home recently and she was watching Sky Sports. She never watches Sky Sports. She said to me, did you know Leicester City have now signed two new English players, she said, called Alf. I said, what? What are their surnames? She said, I don't know their surnames, she said, my wife. She said, but they're both called Alf. I thought she's having a laugh, but no, she was absolutely right. Jamie will back me up on this later on. She was absolutely right. There was Claudio Ranieri a couple of weeks ago, the Leicester City manager, being interviewed on Match of the Day, and he actually said, Today, uh, this uh, result, hmm, yes, is uh, um, it's not a great result for us, but what I liked today was a performance, performance of my player. Uh, first half, very, very good performance. <laughs> Second half, even better. So I'm very happy with both halves. My wife was right, can I say. We've not just got Manish here, though. We, well, he hoped, I don't think she's here. Anita Rani, fabulous TV presenter, Anita Rani. Bradford Zone was going to be here. I don't think she made it in the end. Anita, you will have seen, of course, on The One Show. I met Anita a while ago. I said to her, what's the question you get asked most often? She said, how bright is Alex Jones? That's the question she gets asked most often. Alex Jones, of course, co-presenter on The One Show. Matt Baker, the other presenter on The One Show, said the same thing to me once. He said, people are always saying, you know, how bright is Alex? Because I think she's a few uh, ounces short of the whole pound, but she's a bright lass. She really is, although recently, we were doing a feature on The One Show about euthanasia. And I said to her, oh, we really need to sort out this issue of euthanasia, don't we? And she said, well, I think we need to sort out the youth in this country first. So... <laughs> But probably the most famous brown face we've seen on television in the last 12 months, Nadia Hussein, of course, the winner of Bake Off. Hugely popular, Nadia. I watched all that. I like a bit of Bake Off. Paul Hollywood, I've seen his spin-off programs, like Paul Hollywood's Bread. Um, I've always enjoyed cooking exotic and Italian breads. But I think it was on my mother's lips that I first heard the word 
focaccia. I'd always remember my mother saying to me as a little lad, now listen now, Paul, focaccia. Taking any more money out of my purse. But I hope you've enjoyed your food tonight. Obviously, we all enjoy good Indian food, especially in Indian restaurants, which I know is nothing like the food Indian people eat at home. We hear that all the time. But the choice of, on the menu is huge. Everywhere you go, you look at the menus, you've got your buna, you've got your madras, you've got your pasanda, you've got your curry, you've got your curry. And I always wondered, what is a curry? And then I realised it's actually just a curry for people from Birmingham. <laughs> I'll have a curry, please, mate. And thanks for spelling it phonetically for us. Makes it a lot easier. And two of them big crisps. <laughs> Sadiq Khan is in the room from the Water Politics Ladies and Gentlemen. Sadiq Khan, hoping to become the next London Mayor. He has a hard act to follow. Boris Johnson has been impressive, you have to say. Although I thought recently Boris was losing it. Did you hear Boris Johnson when he said, in this country, at this moment in time, we face... No, well, you're laughing, but come on, no, come on. We, we, we face, no, seriously, no, no, let's be absolutely clear about this. We face, we face three major crises. We have a fuel crisis, we have an obesity crisis, and we have an unemployment crisis. We could solve all three of those crises at a stroke. All we need to do, all we need to do is to suck the fat out of the fat people, turn it into fuel, and pay them for it. <laughs> that way... Joke's about finance, and I finally got you. That way, <laughs> that way they could go on eating as much as they like the fat people, safe in the knowledge that they had turned themselves into a minor British cottage industry. Who needs fracking, ladies and gentlemen, when we've got snacking? That's what I say to you. That's what Sadiq has got to follow. One politician I've never understood, Diane Abbott. I don't know how successful, how she's become so successful, because... I've been impersonating people in the world of politics, entertainment, and sport for about 30 years now. But I don't think I've ever known anybody open their mouth quite as widely as Diane Abbott does when she's talking. Which is really quite ironic because nothing of any great value ever seems to come out of her. From the world of comedy, Sanjeev Bhaskar is in the room somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. Sanjeev Bhaskar is here. Good old Sanjeev. I was listening on 4 Extra recently to one of his excellent Goodness Gracious Me programs from years ago. I also enjoy listening to Sarah Milliken on 4 Extra, principally because when you listen to Sarah Milliken, I love it because when you turn her off, oh, the silence that follows, ladies and gentlemen. But there are some great comics around. Sanjeev has also been on Question Time once or twice, as has Joe Brand, someone I'm sure you all know. She was on there very recently, Joe Brand, on Question Time. At one point she said, um, if I was leader of the Labour Party, uh, how would I get rid of the present Tory government? Well, I think I'd probably have to eat the bastards. Um, good impression, wrong joke. Um, we have people from the world of music in here. I don't know anything about the world of music. The only musician I impersonate is Gary Barlow. I'm sure, hey, do you know what? I'll tell you what, do you know what? I'm sure you've all had this with your Gary Barlow impressions too, is that, do you know what? If you start going too slowly as Gary Barlow, you just end up turning into Dave from the royal family, don't you, Bab? <laughs> the only thing I knew about music in the 80s, I was at university in the 80s, in Leeds, lived in Headingley, big Asian area. Headingley, of course, in Leeds. Some people in from Leeds tonight. One of the biggest bands at the time was a band called The The. The The. I always wondered, how do people in Leeds pronounce the name of that band? See you, Mum. I'm off outfit night. Don't club to see. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work at all. The North, of course, has given us many good Asian boxers, though, over the years. One of my favourites has been Amir Khan. I'm sure you know Amir Khan from Bolton. And Amir Khan once said famously, do you know what? Before a fight, before a fight, I don't eat. I don't, I don't have sex, right? I don't have sex for three months. For three months before a fight, I won't have no sex. And when my mates find out about that, they say, I'm here, I'm here, mate. Why don't you just get married? It's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> One of my other favorite Asian northern boxers over the years, you may remember Prince Nazim Hamad about 20 years ago. What a star was Prince Nazim Hamad. And he wasn't exactly lacking in self-confidence, either was he, in interviews. I'm the best in it. I'm the best at boxing. I'm the best at fighting. I'm the best at talking to you lot. 
I'm the best at saying that I'm the best. I even say the word best, the best. People said that that George best, he was the best, but he was just G best and I am the best. You better believe it, oh baby. We will come to our first award very shortly. I know last year Seb Coe uh, presented a couple of the awards, I'm told. Seb, of course, in the papers recently, these allegations in the world of athletics that athletes have been taking substances they shouldn't take. Mo Farah. Mo Farah had to defend himself a little while ago. You may have seen it. Mo Farah said, I've been offered stuff. I've been offered stuff all the time. But I would never take nothing that changed the way that I perform. Like, you know that you take them things that, that can have a lot of long-term damage on your internal organs, innit? So I can honestly, honestly say that I have never, ever eaten that corn. I just do them adverts, ma'am. I know a lot of Asians are big into cricket. I don't follow cricket at all. But of course, one thing I do know about cricket, there was somebody banned from cricket for taking drugs recently for about four years. Banned for taking drugs in cricket. Normally, I would say drugs in sport, that is just not on. But if you're playing cricket, you've got to make it interesting for yourself somehow, haven't you? God. Finally, on the sporting front, two things before we get on to the awards. Tennis. What a great performance from Shazia Mirza over the years, getting to Wimbledon finals, winning with Martina Hingis, the women's doubles last year, Shazia Mirza. Very good, talented Indian player. This year, of course, we'll be following her and also Andy Murray, but people are worrying that Andy Murray is suffering already because of having had the baby. He said himself recently, you know, a lot of people did say that when Roger Federer uh, had his twins that, you know what, affected his game because a lot of people could see that he was more tired than normal, more disheveled than normal, a bit more grumpy on court than normal, but, well, I couldn't be more tired, disheveled or grumpy, so that's not going to affect me, is it? <laughs> and finally, we mentioned football earlier on. I can't leave without talking about Arsenal for a minute or two. Arsene Wenger. People are saying Arsene Wenger is going to leave the club soon. His record in the transfer market has not been good. One player I wish Arsene Wenger had signed. The former Bolton Wanderers, Fulham, and Aston Villa centre-half, Zat Knight. Yeah, not because Zat Knight is a particularly good player. He's not. I just want Arsene Wenger in the twilight of his life to be able to look back on his Arsenal career and actually say, Well, obviously, I signed a lot of players over the years for Arsenal, but overall, I think I will always remember Zat Knight. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. We got there in the end. Enough about me and the weird voices I hear in my head. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is all about you. It is time now to recognize, to reward, and applaud the winners of the six Asian Awards. Each of your winners tonight has been carefully chosen by a truly distinguished panel of judges, the Asian Awards Judging Council, handy name, uh, made up of key business people, cultural leaders, and eminent political figures, all led by the Right Honourable Lord Billy Moria of Chelsea. All tonight's winners, and they're all in this room at night, tonight, they do not know it yet, but they're all here. All tonight's winners make a truly global impact on our lives in business and entrepreneurship, sport, arts, and public service. All of us owe a debt of gratitude to those whose efforts we applaud tonight.